let's get going. Anyhow, hi, thanks for being here. My name is Dan Williams, and I am the project lead for the US Web Design System. We have a, I think, a good uh, monthly call scheduled for today. Uh, on the agenda, some product updates. We'll be uh, looking at a few nice new site launches. I'll be uh, showing you a little bit about the USWDS uh, Jekyll 5.0 uh, theme. Uh, this is the newest version of USWDS Jekyll and one that uh, uses uh, Design System 2 in its implementation. I'll be giving a preview of that. Uh, and then we'll be talking to uh, Brian Seek about settings powered Drupal. Uh, a lot of the things we'll be looking at in USWDS Jekyll will be sort of extended and continued uh, in the context of Drupal. And at the end of all of that, we'll have time for some questions and answers. So first up, product updates. We've got a new version of the design system out today. Um, and uh, there are actually a couple of them that came out in the last day. Uh, there was 2.3.0 and also 2.3.1, fixing a couple of uh, uh, irritating bugs. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll look at a few of the most uh, irritating of that rogues gallery now. Um, so now uh, the design system is properly including uh, component theme variables. There was a little bit of, um, of a problem with how they were being imported uh, in 2.2.1 uh, uh, and uh, now that is uh, that's fixed now. Um, the um, the hero image uh, theme setting that was changed uh, a couple versions ago uh, has a different default that's now uh, better and more backward compatible with what you might have had before. So um, as you're upgrading to the newest design system, uh, you will find that uh, there are fewer, fewer uh, little uh, speed bumps along the way. There were a couple small issues with the, with the header and the footer that are now fixed. Um, there were some problems with the mega menu where uh, some subsections at mobile width were not really uh, showing up at the proper width, and now they do. Uh, the open and close carrots um, in, the, in the mobile footer are now the proper size. We did a lot of work in trying to improve the uh, reliability of our SVG assets a couple of releases back, and um, that sort of frogged a couple things up. Um, so open and close carrots are now fixed. And now the success icon looks like a check mark and not a warning, which um, that's actually a really irritating and uh, problematic bug and that is now fixed. Uh, we're now using prettier formatting, um, which is not just prettier, but it is uh, capital P prettier. Uh, we're using a prettier formatter in our work. And we'll begin to see, we see that in the code base now and I'll be updating it throughout um, USWDS site. Matters very little, I think, in, in lots of ways for what you see um, in the outputted uh, in the outputted CSS. Uh, but it does mean, uh, in a small but significant way, moving from single quotes to double quotes in our code. Uh, a lot of dependency updates um, in this one. Tried to put a lot of time into really doing a, a big audit of how we're handling our uh, dependencies, um, trying to keep them up to date and uh, in the most um, uh, secure and using uh, as few uh, additional dependencies as we need. So I uh, deleted a bunch of dependencies, updated a bunch of older ones, and now the uh, design system code base is, um, is a lot, uh, it's much more manageable. All of this is coming soon to USWDS Gulp and USWDS Sandbox. That should be, uh, that should be coming just in the next couple days. And also coming soon is a security update to the 1.x branch. I can't remember what that'll be now. It's like 1.6.12 or something, 1.13. Uh, Anyhow, it's not a, not a mind-blowing security update, mostly just going through the dependencies, updating them, and trying to uh, remove any, uh, any new uh, uh, small vulnerabilities that we're finding there. So that should also be coming in the next uh, few days before uh, Thanksgiving break. We've got a new version of Public Sans out. This is 1.007, and this um, 
has uh, just a, you know the kinds of things you see in a uh, in a new uh, font um, release. It has uh, you know, sort of improved uh, spacing, um, a few uh, more uh, regular characters, um, little things. Uh, fonts are always little things, um, but that's out, and that's in the most recent release as well. Uh, and sort of the big thing I think about Public Sans is now you can find it on Google Fonts. Um, that was a long time coming, uh, but now it is there and, and you can sort of download and use Public Sans through Google Fonts. We expect in the not too distant future that that Google Fonts functionality will uh, we'll be able to get it enabled in uh, the sort of uh, Google Apps. So that we expect in the not too distant future that we'll be able to see public sans in say Google Docs um, and Google Slides, things like that. So that's pretty cool. I'm pretty excited about that. As I mentioned at the beginning, uh, USWDS Jekyll theme uh, 5.0 is not yet published to Ruby Gems, but it is ready for a preview and will likely be up in Ruby Gems soon, within the next couple of weeks. Um, just a little bit more testing uh, we're gonna need on that, but that is close and we'll look at that more really, really soon. So site launches, uh, since we met uh, in October, there've been a number of uh, notable site launches using the design system. And I think in most cases here, all based on design system two. So, uh, it's pretty exciting to see a new site from NIST. Um, uh, it's a, a nice, uh, great new site. Um, I enjoy looking at their site. I enjoy reading their blog. Uh, and it's great to see NIST um, up and going on a new design system implementation. Uh, similarly, we've got a uh, new set from uh, findtreatment.gov. There's some. Um, the Office of Juvenile Justice and Delinquency Prevention, uh, one of the sites from DOJ that we'll hear a little bit more about with, uh, from Brian later. And, uh, and finally, uh, near and dear to my heart, uh, the General Services Administration has a new USWD S2 powered site that is awesome. And we're all really excited about that. So great work, but um, I'll get started again with uh, with the uh, uh, web design system Jekyll uh, version five, uh, which is a uh, this is the USWDS Jekyll theme, and I'm going to attempt to give a little preview of that. Um, I have a preview branch right here. I will uh, copy this into the chat later, but um, essentially uh, all of this is up in GitHub. Uh, it's in the 18F USWDS Jekyll repo, uh, the branch is update USWDS2. And this is what we'll be working on for this demo. And there's that fun demo font. And sort of I'll jump into over here. So when you go to that, um, when you go to that link, uh, we have sort of uh, updated the, the documentation in this, uh, in the README. So it gives a little bit more information about how you actually sort of um, install it and add it to your project. This is, uh, this is a gem. And um, uh, so you'd be adding it to your gem file. Uh, using the version five preview right now uh, involves like connecting it to, uh, to a Git repo and branch. Eventually, uh, this would be a gem that we would connect. You just use USWDS Jekyll, or you could uh, you could explicitly tie it to uh, version 5.0, which is what it will be when it's published to Ruby Gems. Um, when you add something to a Jekyll theme, uh, you uh, sort of uh, bundle it all up, and then you add it to your config.yaml file in uh, at the theme key. Uh, so if we come back over here to our uh, to our uh, Jekyll theme, we've got the USWDS Jekyll in our theme key. And once we do that, we, uh, we sort of bundle install it all up. Then over here in our terminal window, um, we can just um, we can just bundle exec Jekyll serve and 
it's, uh, it's good to go. One of the things to mention about the, this new version is that it needs to use, uh, it needs to use Jekyll 4. Um, right now, uh, the way that Jekyll 4 handles its uh, SAS files is like significantly improved from earlier versions of Jekyll. And it really requires uh, Jekyll 4 to, to handle the USWDS SAS properly. Um, the other nice thing about Jekyll 4 is it is a significant speed increase over previous versions of Jekyll. So if you're able to uh, upgrade to Jekyll 4 to use this, you will uh, notice that your sites compile significantly faster and that the USWDS SAS also compiles super fast. It will com compile as part of um, part of Jekyll and it will do it sort of any time you make a change in one of the files. So we have this going here over in my browser here. We can see what it's running here. This is a this is sort of a fork of the 18F front end guide. Um, I should mention this is something that they're working to deprecate and move into a different place. Uh, but it's a lot of great information that will eventually find a new home. Uh, but it is a site that was built in an old version of USWDS Jekyll. Um, this is the um, this is frontend.18f.gov where you can find the existing version. Um, and this is the version when it's been sort of upgraded to the new version of the design system and the new version of the USWDS Jekyll theme. Uh, there are small changes here and there around uh, sizing, uh, but um, but relatively minor, all things considered, moving from USWDS to USWDS2. There, the main things to know about this implementation are that uh, it really makes good use of uh, USWDS settings files, uh, USWDS2 settings files, and sort of uh, also uses the uh, design system design tokens in all of the various settings that you might have previously set or, and still set in your uh, uh, USWDS uh, Jekyll uh, data files. The, the update from uh, 4.x to 5.0 doesn't make a lot of changes to the way uh, data is structured in the Jekyll theme. It just, um, it mostly just changes from using uh, sort of explicit hex codes to using USWDS design tokens. Um, so the important thing, and this is mentioned in the docs, that uh, is that all of this is uh, sort of based in this underscore SAS directory. In the underscore SAS directory, you're gonna need to have a couple of additional directories, a settings directory and a custom directory. And the settings directory is where you put the design system um, uh, the design system settings files. There's a link in the docs uh, to, a, to an easy way to just download all of these settings files uh, individually and then you can just add them to your project. And these are the same kinds of settings files that uh, you would see if you're familiar with using the design system in any other context. So uh, a lot of the same stuff that, that uh, you're familiar to seeing if you're already familiar with design system too. Um, Additionally, there's a, you want a custom directory inside of your uh, SAS directory where you would put this file called USWDS theme custom styles. And this is where you'd be adding additional styles um, that uh, you would be adding to your theme. Uh, this has a few uh, defined styles in here already. One of the things that I wanted to do when I was upgrading from the old version of this site to the new version of this site was to take whatever rules were previously in here and to update them to design system tokens. Um, if we come back over to the design system migration page, we have, um, we definitely have some resources here for upgrading uh, into tokens where, you know, if something was previously 11 pixels, you know, we might recommend that you change it to 1.5 spacing units, which you would express as uh, a function units 1.5 in your SAS. And that's what we've tried to do over here to take, uh, to take the way the code was written in the uh, uh, earlier version of the design system and to upgrade it to design system two. Um, so what that means is that all of the kind of theming possibilities that are built into the design system are now 
built into uh, this version of the Jekyll theme. So if we wanted to go in and make changes to, uh, let's just say the uh, typography, uh, if we wanted to change it from source sans to uh, public sans, and then if we wanted to then go through and uh, change our uh, headings into uh, to the sans token, we could do that. And when we make those changes, we see that uh, Jekyll's doing its thing in the background. Come back over here to our page, give it a reload, uh, the fonts uh, sort of update, and sort of because of all of the sort of uh, font size normalization, you tend to see when the, when the fonts change that not a lot about your layout changes, really just the, the tone of the page changes. So we could, uh, we could make lots of kinds of changes in, in, the, uh, in the settings files, uh, but we can also make them in the, in the Jekyll data that powers, uh, that powers the, uh, the styles of this theme. So you know, we, could, uh, we could sort of go in and, and make changes to, let's just say the banner, where currently it's, uh, it's base lightest. Uh, we could change it to base uh, darkest. Um, which is the same as ink. Change the text to white. Banner link to uh, red 50V and the hover to red uh, 40V, something like that. Let's we'll see if that works. Come back over here. Give it a reload. Yeah, and there you have. Uh, now there's um, now there's a black banner up at the top. Let me a few more changes here. Let's see if I can uh, use my, let's just commit these things here. Do that. Then we'll go back here and uh, let's just revert these. Oops. Close. Can I do it? Yeah, son of a gun. Whatever. Uh, it's not important. Um, Ah, of course. Let's uh, let's use the incoming change. Boo! And save that up. Come back over here. Come back over to custom styles. Ch -ch 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 -ch. Fix whatever we have here. Um, ch -ch -ch. And we want to accept both changes. And not do that. Yeah. Make a few changes, save them up, come back to our page, reload. Oh, how about that? We've um, uh, just made a few uh, style changes, sort of using design system uh, tokens and settings. Uh, so now we have a sort of new version of the of the 18F front end guide uh, in design system two in Jekyll using. Uh, all the sort of tokens and settings with a couple new uh, themes uh, over the top of it. And all of it um, uh, coming out pretty easy. Like I upgraded uh, this old uh, front end guide theme to uh, the new, uh, to the new theme uh, in, that took me about an hour and a half to, uh, to make little changes and get everything working the way uh, I expected it to work. So it kind of depends on if you're already using USWDS Jekyll and you want to move to the version two version of USWDS Jekyll, like it might, depending on the complexity of your site, like uh, your mileage may vary, but, um, but I've tr tried to put in a bunch of work to, to make it as easy as possible and to make everything as consistent with the USWDS two experience as I can. So that is, the USWDS uh, 2, uh, USWDS Jekyll theme. Uh, you can find it here. I will put that in the chat. Um, and you should check it out. Um, I, think, I think it'll be a significant uh, improvement from old versions of USWDS Jekyll. I've now integrated it on a couple sites and, uh, and it's working pretty well. So with that, I am going to stop talking about USWDS and Jekyll. 
I can come back over here. Um, and we can go to the next uh, part of this, which is, you know, now sort of transitioning from thinking about this uh, with, in the Jekyll context to thinking about settings powered Drupal. Um, and to do that, I'm going to introduce uh, Brian Zeek, who is a developer working with uh, Civic Action and the DOJ. And I will stop my share and I'll let uh, Brian jump on to his share and introduce himself. Hey, Brian. Hello, can everybody see my screen and everything okay? I can see it and hear you. Okay, perfect. Um, so like Dan said, I'm a, my name is Brian Seek. I'm an engineer with Civic Actions. Uh, and I'm gonna run through some of the, the, the basics of setting up your Drupal theme to use USWDS2. Um, and because there's been some questions and stuff back and forth about it, so hopefully this will cover most what everybody would need to do. And plus, after that, show how we've been using USWDS as child themes in Drupal to spin up multiple sites for the uh, Office of Justice programs on a single code base. So here we go. So the first thing I'm going to cover are Drupal themes. There's a couple of them out there, and so it might be kind of confusing which one to choose. Um, so there's either, either of them will work. Um, what I'm going to focus on when I show this demo is the one that's namespace under USWDS, and here's a link to find it here. I'll drop that in the chat here uh, towards the end of this. Um, and also, you're always you always have the option of starting from scratch to build your own theme using USWDS because it does bring in a lot of stuff. I'm also not going to be covering any of that uh, in this presentation, but also know that once you kind of get the feel of what Drupal's doing and what USWDS is doing if you want to roll with your own thing. That's not too hard to do either. Um, so the, the USWDS theme was created by Brock Fanning at the DOJ. It's co-maintained by some people at Civic Actions. Uh, Iris, who I work with, is, is the main gatekeeper on our end for that, and she does a fantastic job of getting new versions in there. Um, and what the USWDS Drupal theme covers is templates. So some of those components that you see in USWDS are actually templatized out inside of Drupal, which makes it handy. You don't have to write all that stuff on your own. Um, it also does a bunch of pre-processing to get everything into the right place with your variables and, and different sorts of data that is needed to, to make those components work. And also there is some config involved that makes things a lot easier. So certain little little alterations that you can make throughout the components, some of those things exist inside a Drupal config, and I'll show some of that stuff. So to get started, you want to create a sub-theme. So the, the first thing to do is just download the theme from drupal.org. You can create a sub-theme following the directions inside the readme file. Uh, there's, there'll be a little example sub-theme folder in there. Uh, the next step is to set up your SAS compiler and location of the compiled CSS. So I'm going to give you a tip of using USWDS Gulp for a jump start here. If you don't have your own system already set up, that has everything that you that you need to, to get going with USWDS, and it works great with Drupal. Um, the fourth thing you need to do is configure your USWDS settings and compile, which is a small bullet point, but actually a really large thing. And that is where you would set all your, your theme colors and everything else like that. I would really suggest before you get into this stage to do some prototyping with USWDS with your design team and with your, your client to see you know, where, where, where things go and what this design system will cover versus what is going to be a deviation from that. So that's kind of a big thing that I put into the, a, a simple bullet point. But once you have all that stuff determined, that would be your next step. And then finally, install the theme and sub-theme and, and set your sub-theme as your default. Um, I'm gonna go into these steps in a little bit more detail here. So the sub-theme setup here, and what I meant by changing the CSS uh, to be the destination where you're compiling, is that there is a library override that comes inside of the sub-theme info file inside of the sample. And so what you're gonna to wanna to do is where it's, it's set to the CSS, you're gonna to want to have this value here be where you are going to actually be compiling your CSS. So instead of 
where out of the box it says assets slash CSS, and then it points to the compiled USWDS CSS, you want it to be to, to your custom one. Um, so wherever you decide to put that, it would probably be somewhere just like CSS slash and then whatever your project CSS file name is. The JS override here, you just want to keep that the same. What this is doing is it's copying out all of the US WDS library into a folder that's inside of the, the theme. And that's why it's wanting to, to replace these assets. Um, and the reason why we're doing that is, is, I think the reason why the original maintainer of this module or theme is doing that is because they want it to be able to work as a standalone, no custom added um, SAS or anything else where you could just download it, copy the, the assets over and it runs. And so in order to do that, to have both the best of both worlds, they introduce this, this library's override. So you can go and, and update that as you need to. So the next step here is setting up your, your USWDS gulp. Um, be sure to set your pass to the assets directory that the theme requires before you run gulp init. And this is that directory I was talking about where things are moved. So an example of that is here where your, your project SAS directory will be relative to where you're working with your, your gulp file here. Um, the images are actually gonna, instead of being inside of node modules, they're now inside of assets slash image slash IMG, fonts are going to be in assets slash fonts and JavaScript assets slash JS. And then your compiled CSS is going to be the destination of where that exists. In this example, it's just in a CSS folder here at the root. So configuring your USWDS settings. In addition to all of the custom stuff that you want to do with your site, there are a few things that you want to switch to that assets uh, directory path. And one of them is a image, it, the theme image path variable that's inside of the general SCSS. You want to just make sure it goes to assets. Inside of typography, you want to make sure your fonts are going to assets. Inside of components, there's a theme hero image variable that you want to set to assets as well. And so, and then yeah, in my next step, now you can configure all of your site's colors and typography and, and spacing and things like that. So once you get your USWDS stuff done, you can then install the, the theme, you know, compile it, install the theme. And then once you install the theme, you can go into Drupal. And in your theme settings, there are several different USWDS based things that you can set. And so I'll just step through a couple of those. They're not too many, but they are pretty handy. Um, the first one is the header settings. So you can use an extended style header, which is a bigger header, or a simple, I think it's called, header, which has less things in it. Um, there's examples on, on the Drupal theme site for the differences between those two. Um, there's a checkbox if you want mega menus enabled. So what this does is if you check that, it's going to use the, the required markup to render the USWDS mega menus. Um, there's a checkbox to display the Gov banner at the top of the page. So if you choose for some reason to not have that on, you could uncheck that and then it won't display. Um, further settings are in the footer. I don't know if you guys can see that's kind of a small image, but there are a couple styles of footer. There's a big footer and there's a compact footer. You can choose different things there. And if you check this add agency info into the footer, then it will give you option to fill out these fields that builds a footer component with this stuff kind of pre-baked into it for your theme. And there's a handful of things there that, that map to that component for the footer. Um, and then there's the menu behavior, and this is kind of, this is an important one. If you check this duplicate parent menu items as first item in drop downs, what that does is it'll create a multi level menu. When you have a multi level menu, it'll make the first link the a button, and then repeat that link as the first item in the list below it. So then you don't have to create dummy links that don't go anywhere just to show things below. It's kind of a handy little thing, but you can turn that off if you don't want to use that. Um, there's also this setting for bypassing menu processing for these menus. What this means is, is if you have a menu that you don't want to have USWDS classes and other attributes processed on, you can check that. So if you have a custom menu that some other Drupal mod module needs to handle in a different way, you can set, you can check that and then you won't get any USWDS processing there. 
And so it makes it a little bit easier to wrangle for custom things. So that's Drupal. I kind of blazed through that pretty quick, but we can take some questions on that and I can show some examples if anybody has any questions after going through the rest of this. So here's the, the bonus is setting up multiple USW DS themes on one code base. So this is our, our project is, has been kind of a, an interesting one, but we're actually a partner that we're partnered up with Acquia, um, who, the, who the Office of Justice Programs has contracted with to create a single code base to launch these 70-ish, I'm not even sure what the actual number of sites it is, but it's 70-ish sites on a single code base. So they have a lot of offices under this umbrella that they wanna pull together into a cohesive platform that they can all use. And, and so everything looks solid and works in the same way. Um, and we started this project using USWDS version two while it was still in beta. And we learned a lot of stuff along the way. So there's some things that I'm not letting USWDS do because I didn't know that it could do it. And so I've been over time kind of refactoring things and letting and using the design system more as I learn more about it. Um, the technical end of running all these sites on these different environments is handled by Acquia's cloud site factory. So that's kind of the thing that's, that's giving it the ability to use multiple sites. And then we're using child themes inside of Drupal to give each office their own settings, their own USWDS look and feel, and, and to have other little configurable changes. So the, the big advantage here has been to the timeline. Um, it took us about maybe six months or so to build the platform and migrate the first site. But then the next site that we launched was ready in about a month and most of that time being migrating. And so one thing we've been doing with each office is that we've been doing a bit of refining on the platform and a lot of feature building. So building new features using USWDS components and other things that, that each site requires. And so by doing that, every single site when that deploys gets these updates of, of these new features. And so it kind of enriches the platform as these new offices come on and they don't really take that much to get a new site built, but it has a lot of benefits downstream as well. Um, okay, so to do this, you have to make a copy of your USWDS settings files and you place them in a, in a SAS directory for your new theme. Uh, this project, we also created a variables file that's kind of in between things so that some things could diverge easily when they need to. This isn't something that you would need to do on a single site, but we found after a couple of offices launched that we did need to create a, a intermediate variables because we were mixing and matching a couple of things where the USWDS settings uh, weren't specific enough for what we needed. So this is kind of what this looks like. Um, as you can see, we have some variables for some items in the menus and then for buttons. Uh, this file goes on for a little bit longer, but we also have different SVGs that we want to use in place of where, you know, where one might not work, where another one will. And so this is where we kind of set some of the color. So the step there is to set your settings file still, you know, set your, your primary and secondary and base colors and all that stuff, and then come to, the, to this and, and make sure that they all still match up and you can make little tweaks here as we need to. Um, each sub-theme has its own set of gulp tasks. So we put another gulp file going in, in each uh, child theme. This one, this isn't using USWDS gulp, but it's, it's kind of similar to what you would see. Um, so we're keeping all the USWDS stuff pointed at the parent theme, and then we're compiling our specific settings to that. So as you can see here, we have USWDS settings at the root of where things are, and then we're, we're importing USWDS from assets from our original, this is our parent theme, it's called OJP, and that's where it's getting the, the base USWDS stuff. And then we're importing our variables file that I was just showing. And then there's a couple uh, other things that are pointing back to the parent. And those are just some SAS functions, some mix-ins, uh, a little bit of base styling stuff. And, and then we're using Pattern Lab in this project. And so then all the patterns come in after that. Um, one thing about these functions and mixins and probably even some of the space stuff is 
I built some of these things before I knew all of what USWDS could do. And so some of these things I may not even need all of my functions or mixins, or I, I could probably pare down those files a little bit because the system does provide a lot of functions that are pretty standard. Um, so then the next step, just like when you were to build your own um, child theme, just if it's a standalone site, we, are, we still have to override that parent CSS in an info file. And so here um, we have our libraries override inside the info file and for OJP, which is, again is our base, base theme for its library, we're just pointing our compiled CSS to, the play, in, to replace the CSS that was set up there. So this is um, for this current office and this is relative to this directory here. Um, and like I said here in the, in, the, in the text here, ideally your parent theme wouldn't even provide any CSS, but our parent theme was the original site that we launched and then we built that all the other ones kind of based off of that. Um, I, we're starting to actually refactor this where the parent theme actually doesn't compile any SAS on its own. It's just the children. So this, this setup is just kind of unique to us, but this is not a, a good thing to see that if you are building a theme that's based off of another active theme and you want to overwrite the CSS, this is how that works. And that is it. I kind of went through that pretty fast. Um, if there's any questions about that or actually any questions about some of the stuff Dan was talking about. Yeah, there are some questions in the chat. Um, you, I think you might have some examples of the sites that uh, you are building with this, oh, yeah. um, with this technique. Yeah, sorry. If you just want to show them first and then we'll jump into questions. Yeah, thanks for reminding me. So the first site that launched was for the National Institute of Justice. And you can see here, it's, it uses a USWDS, but a lot of its own little flavor in here too. Um, and the next site that we launched was the one that Dan shared earlier in the call, the uh, Office of Juvenile Justice and Delinquency Prevention. So you can see if I flip back between these two, they're pretty much the same thing with different settings, different config, different content, um, but still unique to each office. So it doesn't feel like you're as much on some cookie cutter site. They do have their own feel. Um, this one was soft launched recently, and I don't think it's launched launched yet. But as you can see, again, it, it's it's very specific. This is kind of a pared down site um, compared to some of the other offices. And so you can see there's less stuff here throughout the nav and, and it's slightly different colors and, and things. And there's a lot of bold reds because this is kind of an emergency based site. Um, there's probably about three more that we're working on concurrently right now. Um, and they are just kind of launching as content gets ready pretty much at this point. Okay. Yeah, so I, I think that's it's really cool, and I think it's a really uh, sort of powerful kind of concept when when you think about using, adopting, and sort of scaling the design system, where you know the design system is kind of the base, and then you could then begin to make a theme off of that base uh, that sort of adapts the design system to the needs of the programmer agency. And then you're able to use that theme uh, and, and allow design system customizations to that theme that allow uh, another level of, um, of uh, customization uh, to sort of individual you know, programs or offices um, uh, beneath that theme. So I think it's a, it's a really sort of powerful model of sort of starting, starting with the design system at the top and, and moving into more and more specific implementations that, are, that uh, allow some uh, ability for, for customization, but also really empower um, working at scale. So thank you for uh, showing us that, Brian. Uh, I'm, I'm really excited to see it and I'm, I'm hopeful that as, uh, as time goes by, we'll see even more examples of, uh, of projects and agencies sort of uh, doing things in a, in a style similar to this. Cool, so yeah, sure. we've got a bunch of uh, questions in the chat and I'm going to just sort of scroll up and start getting to them one by one. Um, uh, first, uh, any thought to expanding the color wheel specifically the yellow gold color range? So 
in general, when it comes to thinking about expanding the color wheel, I think we we move very cautiously uh, around around expanding the color wheel. I think so. Uh, there are a couple of ways of thinking about it. If that means uh, if it means adding something like a new color family, then that that's something that I think is in the realm of possibility, but would require a fair amount of kind of like backup to make the case for it. Um, if it means doing something like adding uh, something in between grades, uh, like adding a, a gold uh, 25 vivid, I think we're most disinclined to do something like that. Uh, I think we'd like sticking with the grades as is. If we're talking about changing uh, the actual hue within a family and grade, I think there's potentially a case to be made for it, but uh, I, and I think uh, taking it to get a GitHub issue might be a way to work to work through it. So I think there's a there's a possibility of expanding the color wheel. We want to we move very conservatively when we think about doing that, uh, and we want to be very mindful of um, of keeping things uh, in the in the established like token grades. Uh, Federalist appears to have its own Jekyll design system template. Will that be updated at the same time and with the same features of uh, USWDS Jekyll version five? No, um, but I think when USWDS Jekyll five uh, comes out, I think it will only be a matter of time before that uh, begins to percolate into uh, into the uh, Federalist Jekyll themes. Um, we're not pursuing this solution uh, in a sort of integrated way, um, but, uh, but I'm definitely talking with that team and I think that what we're doing here will eventually converge, but not, uh, but not at the same time. Next, uh, the next question is, uh, is, uh, is for Brian and, um, and is this work only for Drupal 8? Um, so yes, this work for the USWDS version two is only in Drupal 8. There is a version one um, in, in the same namespace. The, there's a, a Drupal 7 version one uh, theme that works. Going forward, we're not planning on building any new Drupal 7 sites. So I don't, I don't see that anybody would be prioritizing USWDS version two, any of the V2 stuff uh, for Drupal 7 unless, um, you know, unless it's something custom that someone's doing, but I, I don't see a lot of motivation from our end or other people's end to, to build something for seven, unfortunately. Brian, do you know why the USWDS theme is still a release candidate? Um, and if there's a roadmap to full release, because uh, for this person's team, uh, Steven's team, uh, release candidates are not covered. Uh, by their security guidelines. Uh, so being an RC would prevent them from being used on a project. Yeah, um, mostly this is time. There hasn't been a lot of time devoted to the to working on the theme. So if there's anybody out there that um, likes making patches and, and, and contributing, that's that would be really appreciated. But I was just talking about this yesterday with Iris on our team who's who's handling a lot of that. Um, and both of us would like to get it over the hurdle. There are a few things, there's some outstanding bugs and things that we're still finding and things that other people have, have made issues for. So it's just, it's just time we're, we're working on it. And hopefully, hopefully sometime, at least by the, the beginning of next year where we have a full release for that. Thanks. Uh, the next question is, and I'm, um, I'm having a little trouble parsing it. Uh, I'll, I'll ask it, and if the original asker, Harper, uh, thinks I'm not doing it justice, then uh, they, can, uh, they can correct me. Um, uh, were the 70 sites in English, or each site being a different language site, where the front end is different, uh, is it, where the front end is a different language, but the back end is English? So I'm guessing is this is a, a little bit around internationalization and and if you or the theme have any experience with uh, internationalizing the uh, the content, 
Um, so none of the, the the sites that we've worked on so far have have had any translation needs. That said, everything is built to be translated. So um, Drupal Core does this as well as all of the custom work that we've done, plus the theme work inside of USWDS has been made to be translatable. Uh, there's several different ways to accomplish that. And we haven't tackled it on, on any of these projects, but it is ready to do that if we do need to do that. But it, that, is, that is a big effort in, depending on, you know, if it's human translated content versus machine translated content, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Do you, Brian, have any high level pros and cons uh, for folks who are trying to decide between USWDF and USWDS base? Um, I would say the, 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 the pro for using USWDS is that there's a lot of people working on it, um, especially at, the, at Civic Actions where I work, there's several people that are intimately involved in it. So that's not necessarily a pro for other people. Um, but I think it has a lot more configuration involved in it than USWDS base does. I, I've looked around at USWDS base a little bit and it works as you would expect, um, but it's, it's a little bit less feature rich than, um, than USWDS. But I would say, you know, they're, they're about equal, honestly. If, if I were from a non-biased point of view looking at, at it, and I had to choose one, I might choose the one that's not in release candidate for the same reasons that you were, at, you were saying earlier. Um, but you will have to do some, some more work on your own. I, I wouldn't, and I'd say the same goes for both of them. You know, very few sites are acceptable just turning on a, a prepackaged theme and, you know, loading some content. So um, I would say the, the pros of, of USWDS is that there's more people contributing to it, working on it, and when it's actually done, it's gonna be a, a more solid theme. Um, I, I think USWDS base, has a smaller group of people working on it and in it, but I don't know. So I, I, I really don't think it, it matters. Whatever you choose, whatever works, whatever you evaluate, I think we'll get you there. Will the USWDS paragraphs module be integrated into the USWDS theme? Uh, uh, Ryan says that he sees that there were some patches provided in both issue queues. Are you familiar with that? Yeah, a little bit. So there, there is, there are some paragraphs related things built baked into the theme. I think the plan is to um, is to remove those and and keep them you know in paragraphs it by itself. Uh, in in the Drupal community, it seems like people are starting to move away from paragraphs. Um, so baking in the support in the theme is is it's just it's code that most people might not be using. Uh, so. So I think it's going to be a little bit more separated out, but I don't I don't know what the the timeline is. I'm not really familiar with the USWDS paragraph module. We we're not using it on our project, so I'm not I'm not sure where it is and and what kind of work's being done on it. I just want to uh, explicitly call out uh, that you know as we're answering these questions, um, if you know, because we can't uh, actually uh, hear you. If if we're not uh, addressing them uh, in the way you expect or something, just be sure to call it out in the chat so we can uh, so we can come back to something. Um, but uh, uh, so, any recommendations on getting started with the design system on an existing Drupal seven site? Um, I don't know. I mean, you might have some experience with this too, Dan. But I I would say to just research the design system and what it does kind of use it on its own without a cms in it to know where where its endpoints are and the things that it does um and then if you're familiar with your drupal 7 site know the work that you have to do to you know build a new theme using these different components um, i would say that it's probably almost as much work to to re-theme a Drupal 7 site into USWDS version two, because you have to build your own theme too, because there isn't a theme for seven using version two. Um, it's almost as much work as just migrating to, upgrading to Drupal 8 and using some of the existing tools. That's my opinion though. 
Yeah, but I think uh, I think uh, one thing that Brian says is is uh, interesting and good advice that uh, that there's a lot of value, um, you know, before you even get into updating uh, a Drupal theme into just jumping into the, the design system itself, um, whether it's uh, starting with uh, USWDS uh, sandbox or some way just to like just jump into the code, try to see figure out how it works, how it works with settings, how it compiles. Uh, the kinds of things that you can do with it to get comfortable with the design system as a code base um, and then sort of any kind of migration will be that much easier because you'll know what you need to do a little bit better. Um, how does one code base with multiple sites maintain code updates? Uh, so what if one site would like to use a code update but not uh, another site that's, that's sharing that core uh, theme? Do you have any experience with that idea, Brian? Yeah, so um, there is a bit of that going on behind the scenes. I think for the most part, the, the different offices can't pick and choose the, some things that are gonna come over, but they may not be, they might not have the config for their office set up to do you know, X, Y, or Z. Um, it's, it's, there's, a, there's a lot of weird nuances in between all of that stuff. But we're using some tools in Drupal, like config split and config ignore, um, to to set up different. So so each office has their own set of custom modules for some things that are specific to them, and we're using config split to only enable those features for those offices. And so it's all in in one code base, yet they don't they don't have access to they don't have access to any of the other themes they don't have access to any of the other custom code that's written specifically for an office and so that's that's all kind of it within the config split config ignore ecosystem in drupal brian do you have an example of a component in these examples and in these uh, templates and themes that you couldn't find a design system component for, or you chose to uh, deviate from the uh, design system default pattern? Um, yeah, there's, there's kind of a lot. Um, actually, I'm still sharing, look at that. So one thing that you see right off the bat is that this button has this kind of underline to it. That's a thing that, you know, we had to modify um, but we're still using USWDS to provide us most of the way there. And then this kind of under, underline goes on there with some extra custom uh, SAS work there. Other things are like this, this card that you're seeing here, all of these cards on this page, there's no USWDS component for these. So this is a thing that we built. Um, and in using some, using other components of USWDS to, to build these out, I think we could do even a, a little bit more, make them a little bit more USWDSE, if that's a word. Um, but yeah, that's that's two examples kind of right there that that hit me on the homepage that I see right off the bat. And and I'll just sort of add on to that that uh, that we do expect that that teams will be building um, will be building new components uh, when. Uh, when there isn't an existing uh, design system component, um, and that, and that, uh, and that there will be uh, will be changes to uh, to the design system defaults, uh, as as a very perhaps obvious example, you'll see those kinds of changes on the design systems uh, web page itself. So, um, are you planning for Drupal nine? Um, yeah, always. So th that's. Kind of the big pushing thing of, of Drupal 8 is that Drupal 9 is going to be, you know, an easy update from 8 because it's, it's kind of working in the same object oriented structure that 8 is. 7 to 8 is like a huge change, but 8 to 9 is not supposed to be a organic change. So we're always thinking about that, you know, as code gets deprecated, we update things and, and so the idea is at least the the plan the hypothetical plan is that as long as you keep your you, you know your modules and themes updated with with each release of drupal drupal 8 that once you get to 9 you'll basically be drupal 9 ready so we are doing that as 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 things you know roll off and drupal's pretty good about you know allowing things to work for a little while and then phasing them out so um we are trying to keep up on that is there a good resource to ask questions about the USWDS Drupal theme uh, sort of 
in uh, addition maybe to uh, the USWDS Slack channel. And, and with that, Brian, I'm going to start sharing my screen. So I'm going to just, oh, yeah. your, yours will end. I'm just going to throw up some contact info. And, um, and so, yeah, so, uh, so there is a, I, I'll just, before you answer, uh, there is a, a USWDS uh, public Slack channel that you can get uh, through, uh, get to uh, via a, um, I think it's chat.atnf.gov uh, link, um, which is a good place to start. And then I will toss it over to Brian for how you could uh, get even more focus on the Drupal theme. Yeah, I was I was actually going to throw that plug out there. I'm always kind of hanging around with the USWDS Slack open, so I'll look at it as as it's not super busy. So it's you know when something new comes up, I'll go read it over there. Um, you can always just at me on there if it's like a specific question that you think I can help you with. Um, and further out from that, uh, the Drupal.org site for the for the theme. Um, you can post issues. I mean, even if you have a question, you can kind of, you know, spin it into an issue. And if it's something that needs some code work, then it'll spin into a patch probably. Or if somebody can give you further clarification on on why it works, but that has that has more visibility. Um, has everybody who's maintaining the theme or kind of keeping track on it will look at things like that. And if somebody's not um, answering you quick enough, you know, ask around as many places as you can at once. That's kind of my <laughs> method and see, you know, who, who comes up to answer. But yeah, the, the Slack is good and the issue queue for the theme is good. All right, well, I think uh, we have now answered all of the questions. Um, Thank you uh, so much, uh, Brian, for being here and, and presenting the work that you're doing with the design system and the Drupal themes. And thank you everyone who is on this uh, call today for coming and for, uh, and for doing the little dance to, uh, to make sure you could all be here at the end. Uh, I appreciate the opportunity to talk with you all every week. Um, keep your eyes peeled in our uh, public channels and in our repos for, for new work and new changes. And we will see you uh, at the Design System Monthly Call in December. Thanks so much.